This is section 1.7, exponents and order of operations. An exponent is just a shorthand notation for repeated multiplication. So if we have five threes multiplied together, that means three is a factor five times. So if we wanted to write this with an exponent, we could write it as three with an exponent of five. So the three is the base and the five is the exponent. We would read this as three to the fifth power or the fifth power of three. And this is called exponential notation. The exponent five tells us how many times the base, the three, is a factor. But to read exponential notation, for example, if we have 4, we can just read that as 4, or we can read it as 4 to the first power. We usually don't write the 1 if 1 is an exponent. If we have 4 times 4, we can write that as 4 with an exponent of 2. We call that 4 squared, or 4 to the second power. This one, if we have three factors of four, we'd read it as four to the third power, or four cubed, and four as a factor four times would be four to the fourth power. And again, usually an exponent of one isn't written, so if there's not an exponent there, we assume that the exponent is one. So two is the same as two to the first, and seven is the same as seven to the first. Here's some examples. We want to write these expressions using exponential notation. So in this first one, we have six factors of two. That means that we could write this as two to the sixth. And in this one, we have three factors of seven. So we can write this as 7 to the third power, or 7 cubed. Now in this one, notice that we have two different numbers. We have two factors of 4, and we have three factors of 3. So we would write this as 4 squared, to say that there were two factors of 4, and 3 cubed to say that there were three factors of 3. And notice that we're multiplying the two together. Now last of all in this problem, we have two twos and then two eighths and then two twos. So we're going to use the commutative property of multiplication and rewrite this problem so that we have all the twos together. So altogether we have four factors of two and we have two factors of eight. That means that we can write this as two to the fourth power times eight to the second power. Now, if we're evaluating an exponential expression, that means we write the expression as a product first, and then we find the value of the product. Here's some examples. If we want to evaluate 3 to the fifth, that actually means that we have five factors of 3. So we can write this out as 3 multiplied by itself five times. And then we do the multiplications to find what that product is. And if we multiply 3 times itself five times, we get 243. Now with this one, 5 squared means we have two factors of 5. So that's just 5 times 5, or 25. And in this one we have 10 factors, whoops, we have 4 factors of 10. So if we multiply 10 times itself 4 times, that means we have 4 zeros, which gives us 10,000. Now some things to watch out for when you're dealing with exponents. An exponent only applies to its base, and that's the number just to the left of the exponent. So if we have 2 cubed, the 3 exponent only applies to the 2. It doesn't apply 
to any other number. Also, 2 to the 4th is not the same as 2 times 4. Exponents and multiplication are different things. So 2 to the 4th is 16, but 2 times 4 is 8. Now let's do order of operations, and we'll do an example along with it. So our first step is to do all operations that are in grouping symbols like parentheses or brackets. So in this example, the first step for us to do would be to simplify inside the parentheses. So if we add the 6 and the 2, we end up with 8. And now we've simplified inside of our grouping symbols. Our next step is to evaluate any expressions with exponents. So we would want to simplify the 2 to the third. And remember that's 2 times 2 times 2, so that would give us 8. So we'll have 7 times 8. Then the next step in our order of operations is multiply or divide in order from left to right. So in this example, we have two places where we have multiplication. We would first do the 7 times 8, because that's the one on the left. And then we go through and do the other multiplication, the 4 times 8, and get 32. So now we've done all the multiplication. And our next step would be to add or subtract, again, in order from left to right. So our first step would be to find 56 minus 32, which is 24. And now we have one more addition, 24 plus 3 is 27. Here's some more examples. So in this problem, we have a multiplication and a division. So we're going to go in order from left to right. So we do the 3 times 4. And then we will do the 10 divided by 2. So now we have 12 minus 5, and we can do our subtraction to get 7. Here we have an exponent, so we have to work with that one first. So 6 squared is 36. We have 36 divided by 3 minus 2. Our next operation is the division. So 36 divided by 3 is 12. And finally, the multiplication. So 12 times 2 is 24. In this problem, we have lots of grouping symbols. We have a bracket, and inside the brackets, we have another set of parentheses. So we want to work in the innermost set of grouping symbols first. So our first step would be to work inside those parentheses, add the 3 and the 2 to get 5. Next, we work inside the brackets. So 15 divided by 5 is 3. And now we have a subtraction, so 8 minus 4 is 4, and then 4 plus 3 is 7. Now let's do two more examples. Both of these have a fraction bar, which is another type of grouping symbol. If you have a fraction bar like this, you treat it as a grouping symbol, which means that you have to do all of your simplifying on the top of the fraction bar, and then all of your simplifying on the bottom of the fraction bar before you actually do the division that the fraction bar tells you to do. In this first one, we would work on the top first. And even on the top of that fraction, we still have to look at order of operations. Our first operation would be the multiplication of 3 times 6. 3 times 6 is 18. That gives us 18 plus 10. Then we can do our addition, which gives us 28. Now we have 28 in our numerator, and in the denominator, we still have the 3 plus 1. Our next step is to simplify our denominator, 3 plus 1, by adding the 3 and the 1 to get 4. Now we have 28 divided by 4, and we can actually do that division to get 7. Let's look at the next one. This has the same numbers, but a slightly different, some slightly different operations. In this one, in the numerator, we have parentheses around the 6 plus 10. We have to simplify inside those parentheses first. So 6 plus 10 is 16. That gives us 3 times 48. Sorry, that gives us 3 times 16, which is 48.
Now we need to simplify underneath the fraction bar. 3 plus 1 is 4. Now we have 48 divided by 4, which is 12. So notice how that one change, by putting the parentheses in, in the second problem, we got a completely different answer than the first problem where there weren't parentheses.